Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, the one who is and is to come. Greetings to you again in the mighty name of Jesus. Welcome to this our resurrection morning, powerful service, final day of our fasting and prayer. Yes, today marks the beginning of new things. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19 says, Behold, I will do a new thing. And I do it now, says God. And would you not perceive it? It's important this morning that you understand and realize that God is doing a new thing. And I declare this morning that God is going to begin something new in your life, in your personal life, in your home, with your children, with your family. And all that you've been trusting God, in God for, for this week, your answers are upon you. And as we would come together this morning and trust God, as we would anoint ourselves, anoint our families, I know that healing is coming upon you right now. And sometimes, you know, we find that the enemy is just attacking, especially if you come on your final day. He wants to do what he wants to do. But you know what? He has no right and authority over you because we are more than conquerors. And we conquer to the name of Jesus. We conquer to the blood of Jesus. Amen. We conquer to our testimony today. We have the testimony. Do you believe that? We have a testimony, the fact that we are standing here and we have the breath of life, the ruan of God that is within us. Praise be to God that all that is within us, the very breath and the air that's in our lungs, we're going to praise the Lord this morning as we begin to pray and trust God that a manifestation of His divine presence will move over the airwaves and reach our homes. And I know that there's a fire that's going to come and descend and just consume us and as we will allow the presence of God into our lives. Let's just pray. Father, we honor you today. We believe that this is resurrection power. We thank you that this is resurrection day. And we know today that this resurrection power that is present in each of us because we carry the presence of God in us. Lord, we thank you that as your people have believed and prayed even through this entire week, oh God, we know that victory is ours. Hallelujah. We thank you today, oh God, that victory belongs to us. We are not defeated. Because we are more than overcomers. And as Lord, your, your people would join us, our viewers would join us in praising and worshiping with our praise and worship team. Anoint them this morning, Father. They've been faithful, O God, throughout the week. And I ask, Lord, that you will bless them. I cover them with your blood, O God. Every musician and singer. And we thank you today for your servant that will come even later on to deliver God's word. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We just want to bless the name of the Lord all over this place right now. If you've joined in this live feed, we just want you to like and share this page right now. God has something good in store for us today. As Pastor Nain said, it's day eight, the day of new beginnings. We're trusting God for something new in this place. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We just want to bless your name, O oh Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Make us your vessels today, O oh Lord, so that we can carry your new wine, O oh Lord, that fresh anointing, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Won't you lift your hands up right now and let's worship him. We worship you, Lord. Make us your vessel, O oh Lord. Make us your vessel, O oh Lord. Oh, we meet through it all, O oh Lord. Oh, we have testimonies today, O oh Lord. Won't you make us a new vessel, O oh Lord? Oh, we ask you for the new wine, O oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the solar. Now surrender, you are breaking new ground, so I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand, so make me your vessel, make Jesus Christ. 
A fresh anointing, Jesus. We ask it, O oh Lord. We ask for it, O oh Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, your new wine, your new wine, O oh Lord. We ask you for something new, O oh Lord. Won't you fill us up today, O oh Lord? Oh, we ask you to fill us up, O oh Lord. 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 Oh. You are king, won't you fill us up, O Lord? Fill us up, O Lord. Hallelujah. You're the great and mighty God. You're an awesome God. Jesus is who you are. We worship you, Lord. Oh, won't you fill me up, O Lord?
Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus once again. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. This is the eighth day of our fast. We've been trusting God for something new. Come on, if you believe that breakthrough is yours, would you uh, put a comment on our Facebook page now, right now? If it's that for something for you in this week, won't you comment so that we can pray with you, that we can see what God has done in your life. Amen. We give Him glory. I give you glory for all you brought me through. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. We're moving forward, moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Sing your presence.
breakthrough is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I want you to give him a shout of praise wherever you are right now. In your homes, in your cars. Give him a shout of praise, O oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We are going to get ready to trade our sorrows. For it all belongs to him. We're just going to leave everything at the altar today. Hallelujah. We're going to trade our sorrows. Oh, come on to clap. Oh, as we clap and praise the Lord. Say yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Remember. 
Jesus. I'm sensing, Lord, your glory. Hallelujah. Whilst the music just plays on, you don't have to play anything. Just flow with me for a little while this morning. Beloved, we are on the last day of our fast. The last day, the eighth day of eight days of fasting and prayer. You would have heard Pastor Elaine mention this is new beginnings. It's the number of new beginnings. I want you to understand today, we've fasted, we've prayed, we've done what God wants us to do. Now is the assignment that God wants to give. Hallelujah. Your ladder will be greater. That's what the word says. If you've waited upon God, you've done what God wants you to do. Now allow God to do what He wants to do. You see, you've, you've done in obedience and discipline. Now God is saying, I will take care of the rest. Can I prophesy with somebody? There's divine providence coming your way. Can I trap some heads of devils today and say, Ah, those curses are broken. Can I stand here today and say to somebody, Your best season lies ahead of you. Can I say to somebody today, That God is not finished doing what he's supposed to do. Hallelujah. Barabakarunia. I want you to say that to But God wants you to know today. God's gonna bless you. 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 Ah, Rabbas. Right now, nothing's working. Everything you're trying to do is ha, nothing. But God wants to take care of those things supernaturally, and He wants to bless you. And He wants to give you a hope and a future. Bow with me for prayer supernatural restoration and revival. I believe we gathered for the greatest move ever of what God is about to do. Sabrakatish. Oh, 
I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. There's something happening right now. In the atmosphere, there's something happening right now. I, I, I don't know uh, before I pray what God wants to do. Uh, but maybe you've waited faithfully this week. Uh, let me just release something to you right now. Uh, Lord, I release fire. I release breakthrough right now. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Somebody uh, is worried about uh, somebody that is sick right now. I get the name Ellen. Uh, you're worried about Ellen who's sick. Uh, and you're asking, uh, oh God, why aren't you doing this? Uh, I want you to know right now uh, that God... God is touching Dylan right now. Ah, 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 yeah, that Lord. God says I'm bringing resurrection life. Even to Dylan. We worship you, Lord. I want to preach. As our hands are bowed in prayer, Andrea, just pray with us this morning as we get to God's word quickly. Lord, we just Lord, we thank you for the feel your goodness, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath, oh Lord, Father. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for pouring out your prayers, oh Lord, Father. Oh Lord, you'll be giving the hours, oh God. Lord, you be giving the hours, oh God. Lord, you'll 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 be giving the Lord yeah, Father, Lord. Holy Lord, oh God, we thank you, oh God, we thank you, oh Lord Father. Lord, the devil may have tried, oh God, the devil may have tried, but we have stood, oh God, we have stood strong, oh God, for you have been with us, oh God, your hand, oh God, your love and love has been with us, oh God, Father. Oh Lord, oh God, we pray, oh Lord Father, even, oh God, the joy of your service, oh Lord Father. Let your healing oil flow over us, oh God, Father. Let your anointing oil, Lord, flow over us like it ran over Aaron's beard, oh God, Father. Let us feel the touch of you, Father. For Lord, today, oh Lord, we start to new, oh God. We want a new anointing, a new oil, oh God, Father. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we ask from the heavens, oh Lord, Father, to pour out the spirit of fresh upon us, oh God, Father. Bless your servant even as he delivers your word, oh God, Father. Let your anointing touch someone through the service, oh Lord, Father. Through the airways, oh God, Father, let a soul be saved. Through the airways, oh God, Father, let a life be changed, oh God. Lord, oh God, we pray, oh God, Father. Thank you for the prophetic, oh God, Father. Let it flow this morning, 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 oh God, Father. Hallelujah. Well, I want to greet you this morning in that all-powerful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I want you this morning uh, to say to yourself, well done. You've gone through a week of fasting and praying. And I guess this week hasn't been the easiest of weeks uh, simply because every time we want to wait upon the Lord, the devil comes uh, to attack. Uh, but I got news for you this morning. You're going to get blessed more than you've ever been blessed. Hallelujah. Before I continue this morning, and boy, oh boy, do I have a word for you. I, I've written some key words down. I was not able to get that typed uh, onto my tablet, but I just wrote down and I said, Lord, I'm just going to stick to the blueprint of what you're saying. Before I get to God's word, uh, I, I know this has been a difficult week for some. And, uh, you know, I just want to remember a family that lost of a loved one, or actually two loved ones this week, um, from the same family. Brother Sandy Guinness is a, a senior member of our church, and he lost his brother, Pastor Ronnie Guinness, and Pastor Ronnie uh, lost also his son. Now, they died in sequence of days. On Friday, Christopher passed away, and yesterday, Pastor Ron passed away. Now, uh, this, this is sad, and the funeral is going to be today. Um, Pastor Ron is also um, of Evelyn. He's also the father of Evelyn from our uh, Chatsworth campus. So, our prayers are out to Evelyn and Donovan and also the entire Guinness family this morning. Can we bow for prayer as we pray with them or pray for the family? Father, we thank you this morning that you're a God of comfort. 
You're a God of peace and you're a God of love. And Father, we lift on the wings of prayer today. Our dear brother Sandy and his family. Oh God, as oh God, the funeral is about oh God to almost start in a few moments. I speak, oh God, comfort. I speak healing. I speak breakthrough. And I speak victory to that funeral. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that nobody, oh God, in any way will be affected or infected by any kind of disease. I speak your word and I declare faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just too many people are passing on and I don't like this because I believe that we have to affect that. Now, I was thinking this week and we've had some powerful, powerful men and women of God this week that took up the opportunity to come and stand here and to give to us powerful words. Amen. Excuse me. All right. They've braved all odds, some of them for the very first time, came and stood right here and ministered a rhema word. And for every one of you, right from the beginning, uh, I want to say to you, well done. All right. Also, we had my good friend, Pastor Sanjay, or Apostle Sanjay Barna, who was with us on Tuesday night and he blessed us as well. But I want to put the cherry on top of all of that was said this week. And I want to round this up by speaking a word that I believe is in season. The Bible gives to us many types of fasts and many ways that one would fast. But I want to look this morning at the prophetic revelation of God's word. And I want you this morning to turn with me to the book of Ruth chapter 3. And we're going to be reading from verse 1 onwards. Ruth chapter 3. Verse 1 onwards. Now I know for the scholar this morning, you'll probably say, but, but what are you speaking about this morning, Pastor? Because there's nothing about fasting there. Well, let me show you what God put into my heart this morning. Alright, in Ruth chapter 3. Okay? Okay, let me just help you. Matthew, Mark, Luke and Ruth. If you know your Bible. Amen? Somebody's smiling out there. Don't worry, I know the books of the Bible, so you don't have to worry. I'm just trying to get you to know. Alright? Let's go. Ruth chapter 3. And the Bible says, Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, shall I not seek security for you, that it may be well with you? Now Boaz, whose young women you were with, if he is not our relative, in fact, he is whining valley tonight at threshing floor. Therefore, wash yourself. And I want to look at this very carefully because it gives to me a very clue. And this is where I'm going to be speaking from, verse 3. Therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put the best garment and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. Then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies. And you shall go into it, uncovering his feet, and lie down. And, it, and he will tell you what you should do. I was thinking this morning about the wisdom of the mother-in-law, Naomi. And I was thinking about the five things that she tells Ruth to do when she comes in contact with Boaz. I want to share with you this morning five things that happens when you fast. Five things that happen when you fast. Let's start by saying that Boaz is a type of Christ in this picture. Boaz is a type of the bridegroom, Christ Jesus, that the church of Jesus Christ awaits. Ruth is part or is a type of the church as she will later on become the bride. Now what about what Naomi says she ought to do? The first thing is, you, you, you and I need to know that we've gone through this week and we've really trusted God and we need to ask God of the following things. 
Kewa's road that she's about to be united with Boaz. I want you to look at this very, very carefully because there's something that needs to happen. Now, we're looking this morning at the closeness between Ruth and Boaz. The first thing that I want to share with you before I even get to my first point, and this is my means of introduction, and we get this in Philippians 3.10, it says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Ruth is about to get to know the bridegroom Boaz. Now beloved, I believe this was a very challenging week, wasn't it? As much as we've gone through Sunday and we've now come to the next Sunday, and some of us would have gone from 6 to 6, others would have broken at 12, others would have gone 3 quarter day, whatever the situation is. But the fact is you've waited upon God because you wanted to know Him. And I'm going to talk a little about knowing him this morning as we get to the word of God. I believe that Naomi gives five wonderful steps of advice to Ruth. And I'll be talking to you about this this morning. I like, and I'm going to call my first point, A or B, freshly cleansed. Let's get to chapter 3 and look at verse 3. Because that's where I'm, tell, I'm talking from. It says, therefore, wash yourself and anoint yourself. Can I talk to somebody this morning? How many of you this morning would realize that in order for you to attract the presence of somebody in the natural or to, to attract the presence in this case of God, we need to wash ourselves. Here it is. If you look at uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 7 and verse 1, it says, Having these promises, behold, let us, watch now, cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, uh, reflecting holiness uh, in the fear of God. Watch this. Naomi says, wash yourself. Root, like I said to you, is a type of the church. And I believe this morning that as I begin to unfold this word, somebody is going to get blessed. Somebody's going to understand this. You know, a lot of times we don't get answers to prayers is simply because a lot of us are not clean in the presence of God. Can I say that again? A lot of times, a lot of people do not get breakthroughs and answers to their prayers is simply because we're not clean in the sight of God. Watch this. I'm not talking about your physical appearance. When I fast, I cleanse myself from the filthiness of the flesh. My mind has a rethinking, a reconstruction. All the filthiness of the mind would leave. My body that craves for food and pleasures of the world is suddenly being dealt with by God. And what happens? God gets our attention that I'm, as I now begin to rely on God and I want to get close to God, I realize that these are the ways and the steps that I have to. You know, a lot of people don't know this. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, and we normally look at this and we talk about this at weddings, but I like verse 25 and I, was, I just threw it in here this morning. How do I cleanse myself in the spirit? Here it is. That he might sanctify her by the washing of the word. Hang on now. A lot of people today don't realize the hidden treasures and the glorious truths of God's word. When I begin to read God's word, I begin to understand God on a greater platform, on a greater level. And I begin to know that God is working with me. In other words, when I start to learn God's word, I begin to know how to love. I begin to know how to care. I begin to understand the character of God. And that automatically alters my 
own character. It strips me of pride. It takes away all the lust and the pleasures of the flesh. It puts me into a platform of holiness where I come before God and I say, God, here I am. Is somebody listening to me this morning? Now what happens is, the word of God brings reproof and correction. It corrects me from making the mistakes. It helps me to understand how God is operation. Alright, now, somebody once said, the more I read the sacred pages, the better I get to know the rock of ages very true. Let me tell you why I say it's true. Because we're looking for closeness, what the drug say. You're going to have to wash yourself. Rather, what did Naomi say? You're going to have to wash yourself, Rod. You're going to have to get yourself going. You're going to have to. The next thing that I learned about is the blood of Jesus. Are you washed? Yes, I am. How am I washed? By the blood of the Lamb. Soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, as the songwriter or hymn writer would say it. You know what I have? The Word of God. I draw close to God because God's speaking to me. And when I listen to what God is saying, I begin to understand how God operates. But guess what? When I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb, I tell you what? My soul is cleansed. My spirit is cleansed. Let me tell you something. Every time I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb, I know that I have redemption of my sins. I know that even if the enemy wants to attack me, he ain't going to come because the blood of Jesus is my defense. A lot of people don't know that. So I'm cleansing myself. I'm putting myself onto another platform. You know, so what does fasting does? It, you know, I, I always said, and I, I, I want to say this to you. You know, when, when, when we, um, in the natural, cannot survive without water, all right? You're going to have to drink a lot of water. Don't you know that? Two plus liters or more a day. They say your body needs that. Eight glasses or more. But let me tell you something. But you know what? That's the body. That's the flesh. That's that carnal flesh. That, that flesh will go back to the dust. But when you feed your soul and your spirit, the word of God is what water is to the soul. Are you listening to me? Let me say that correctly. The word of God is to our soul what water is to our body. Did I get that right? All right, thank you. So why am I saying that? I'm saying that simply because somebody needs to listen to me today. I need to cleanse myself. I can't go dirty before the God. The next thing that Naomi says, and I like this. Let's look at it. You're going to see this for yourself. That's my second point. Verse 3. Therefore, wash yourself. In other words, get yourself clean. And the next one is, anoint yourself. Aha. Anoint yourself. How do I anoint myself? In the natural, it would be through a fragrance or a perfume. Somebody listening to me. I know that lots of people like good to, to smell good and to, to look good. That's very good for your image. It's good for you as a person. But yeah, Naomi says to Ruth, she says, come on, I want you to put on the best perfume. Now people get attracted to smell, don't you know that? And I know in many um, religions, they, 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 they put a big emphasis on, 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 on fragrance and smell because it attracts spirits. But I want you to know to me, God is not attracted by anything else. But when I anoint myself, when I come before Him and I say, Here I am, Lord. I love you, Jesus. This week was a time when I anointed myself. When I came before the Lord, I spiritually put on the best perfume. And I came and I said, Well, Lord, here I am. And what happens then? It begins to attract the presence of God. Now, come on, let's look at this in the natural. If somebody has a body odor, hasn't had a bath for a long time, and probably there's a body odor on them, would you want to go near them? Absolutely not. Probably you'd want to run for your life. And everybody would want to do that, wouldn't you? 
I can see some of you smiling. That's good. All right. But the next thing that I want to say to you is, but imagine somebody clean. Imagine somebody looking good, fresh, has a beautiful fragrance placed upon them. What happens? We find that you want to be in their presence because the smell of that perfume is so good. I can smell mine. It smells very good. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So what am I saying to you this morning? I'm saying that Ruth says you're going to have to do that. What is the spiritual connotation to this? Ah, uh, come on. How many of you know that you're going to have to have a special supernatural grace, a fragrance upon your life uh, to unlock the doors of your destiny? Come on, is somebody listening to me? So when I anoint myself, I realize that I'm putting myself uh, in the front line to open up some doors of victory. Is somebody listening to me this morning? So I anoint myself. Uh, what did Ruth do? She anointed herself. Uh, the third thing that Naomi advised her to do was to, and you can look at it with me in verse 3. I like that. All right. It says, therefore, wash yourself. All right. She's had a good bathe. She's anointed herself. And then guess what now? Put on your best garment. Put on your best garment. A lot of people today will not understand this. But let's look at it from Ruth's point and I was trying to think about this. Ruth's been a, a widow and she probably had the, probably garments of mourning or mourning clothes. Her husband had died. She probably lost the quest to dress up. She probably was sad, depressed, discouraged, disheartened, defeated. She's gone through some horrible experiences. She survived a famine. Got back to Bethlehem and still had the old clothes on. You know, how many of you today know that God wants to give you the garments of praise? God wants to give you the garments of gladness. Come on, is somebody listening to me? When I come before God, I can't come as much as I, I'm, I'm clean, as much as I'm, I'm anointed. I need to come with the garments of praise because I need to know how to praise God to attract His presence in my life. If somebody don't understand this, let me explain this to you. When I come before God and I now know that I want to get close to Him, I want to get close to my Savior and my King, I'm coming well and with a good but I have a fragrance upon me. I'm coming. I put on my best robes. I've taken off the clothes of heaviness. I've taken the clothes of complaining off. I've broken ties with all of those things. And I come before the Lord and I say, Lord, yea, I am. I want to worship you. Do you know what happens? Immediately there's a connection between you and God. Why? Because your presence, your praises. Come on. Can I say to somebody today, uh, stop. Let's, let's get into our closets uh, and let's see what happens. Uh, there's a lot of moanings and groanings. Uh, there's a lot of beggings that are taking place there. But when I come with the garments of praise uh, and I take away the heavy spirit uh, that I had once held uh, and I begin to begin to praise God uh, the way. Come on. Somebody needs to raise a hallelujah in your prayers, in your closet. Uh, somebody needs to come before God with a heart of thankfulness. Uh, Somebody needs to come and say to God, God, I come before you today with a heart of gladness. I lift up my hands, my countenance of joy. Ah, come on, is somebody listening to me? He's upon that place. Come on, I come with joy. You know why? Because when I have to put my best clothes on, I want to look good. Come on, are you listening to me? Imagine a bridegroom going with shorts to his wedding or a bride going with just an ordinary dress to a wedding. Come on doesn't look good. It doesn't befit the occasion. But I tell you today, as a child of God, you need to know how to put those garments of praise on. What am I talking about today? When I get into the closet, I begin, or when I get into the threshing floor, I begin to say to God, God, I bless you. God, I worship you. God, I give you honor and I give you praise. Why? Because God is about to bless you. Shabba Katosh. I, somebody would be this one. You know, 
Come and sit pray. It's not morning. You're going to have to understand culture. Hebrew or Israel culture. When somebody died, there was a special robe that they wore. I want to say, just, just re replace that this morning. For too long, you've been carrying heaviness. For too long, you've been trying to fight those battles on your own. For too long, you've been trying to do things and it never worked out. But how about you now, after this week of fasting, saying, Well, Lord, I'm about to see the glory of God. Come over me. I'm, I want to see the things that you've destined for me. I come before the Lord with garments of praise. Come on, I come before the Lord and I sing a new song. I come before the Lord and I begin to declare prophetically. Come on, I want to declare prophetically what the goodness of God, the mercies of God that are about to overtake me all the days of my life. You know why? Because I no longer have the garments of heaviness. I've got the garments of praise. And when I have the garments of praise, I'm going to sing a new song and I'm going to sing the things that God wants me to do. Can I challenge you this morning? Do this with me. The next time you get into your closets, make some prophetic things. Declarations. The next time, don't stop moaning. Stop thanking. Stop. Stop asking. Stop begging. Stop doing all that. Come before the Lord with gladness. Come before Him and celebrate His goodness and watch what God does. How He do it. Is somebody getting this today? Come on. Isaiah 61 and verse 3 says to console those who mourn in Zion. Give them the beauty of ashes. The oil of gladness or the joy of mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Come on, are you listening to me today? There's a replacing in the spirit of heaviness with the garments of praise. Can, can, we, can we put on the garments of praise this morning? Sometimes uh, you physically have to stretch out your hand. And sometimes you physically have to put it on in the spirit realm. Uh, and begin to move with the garments of praise. I, I was born to be a praiser. I don't know sorrow. Come on. I, we sang a song this morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I didn't tell them to. But you know what? When you trade your sorrows, what are you, why are you trading them in? You're trading them in for the joy of the Lord. Somebody listening to me. The opposite of sorrow is joy. I don't want Christians to live a defeated life. Can I say that again? If you're a child of God, you cannot live a defeated life. Uh, I, I, I need to press this devil a little bit more and say, if you're a child of God, you cannot live a defeated life. Uh, because that's not God's vocabulary. God has something bigger for you. Come on. What I, am I saying this? Sometimes we need to throttle the devil when he wants to give you some, 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 some negativity in your life. You need to start to say, Lord, after this fast, I know what it is to be a winner. Come on, are you with me today? I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm going there, Lord. I don't care what the bank says, but I know today that I will live and not die. I know that I will lend and not borrow. I know no matter what tomorrow brings, Lord, because I am a praiser. I'm a worshiper. I've cleansed myself. I've anointed myself. I've put on the best garments. Lord, what is going to happen now? It is your turn to bless me. It is your turn to make me the man or the woman that you're supposed to. And what happens? You leave the rest to God. Because when God comes, uh, He comes through for you uh, and He blesses you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout Amen. Somebody praise the Lord this morning. Uh. Somebody give Him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. The fourth one. And I want to share this with you today. You see, it's important for us to understand this. I'm going to read the whole verse so you understand it. Verse 3. Therefore wash yourself and anoint yourself. Put on your best garments and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he's finished eating and drinking. Verse 4. Then it shall be when he lies down. Watch this now. That you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in there. Watch now. Uncover his feet and lie down. Posture is a very important ingredient when one prays. In some cultures, and I know in the Indian cultures, although it is not practiced so much here, 
But if you ever go to India in respect, they will come and they'll touch your feet. That's respect. Feet are an important thing in the Hebrew or Israeli culture. What is Naomi saying? She says, now go to his feet. Spiritually, the best place to be is down at the feet of Jesus. Why am I saying this? Because when I pray, I kneel. I barak before the Lord. I bow before Him. And what do I do? I get to the feet of Jesus. Down at your feet, Lord. Let me tell you something. There's a big secret to that. What does it mean spiritually? Simply, when you bow at the feet of Jesus, you say, this Lord, I fully commit my life and everything becomes yours. You see, that's what fasting does. It, it takes away the whole aspect of me fighting. The flesh is being killed. I'm now at the feet of Jesus. It's also a humbling experience. Mary and Martha, we know the story. We know what they wanted. We know the time that they spent at the feet of Jesus. We know the, even the anger between each of the other. Why? Because that's the best place that you can be in. The feet of Jesus. Humility. God is breaking us today. God is making us humble. God is making us workable. God is making us pliable. God is setting us onto a platform. For his glory. God will never use the proud. He'll always use the meek and the humble. You know why? Because he understands the principle. So Naomi is a very wise woman. She says, now what do you have to get to the feet? What happens at the feet? When you kneel before God. That is what we need to do. We need to come before the feet of Jesus. You know. The Bible has a lot to say about feet. It says, precious are the feet of those who spread the good news. Jesus taught us in humility to wash the feet of somebody. You know why? Because if you go back to Bible days, they walked for many miles and they walked for many days, kilometers, and their feet was always dusty. Nobody would want to touch the feet of somebody that's unclean. But yet Jesus takes water and he teaches his disciples and says, wash the feet. Let me tell you something today. It's the greatest place that you and I can be. Humility. You don't have to fight for anything else. God will give you what's belonging to you. God doesn't believe in second best. He gives you the best. I want you this morning to realize that I'm almost out on time, but let me get to the next one, the last one. Yes, she was. If I could summarize, she had a good bath. She cleansed herself. She put on the best perfume. She changed her clothes. She's now at the feet of Jesus. Now, she says, comply, and faithfully compliant, Lord. That's my fifth point. Ruth chapter 3 and verse 5. And I'm going to read that. And she said to her, all that you say to me, I will do. How many of you know today? If you are compliant to God, the Macedonian call becomes your greatest desire. That's the winning of souls. 
The things that you want to do for God now becomes real. If we went to church, this fast would have been the beginning of the opening of departments. But I want to ask you today, how many of you are serious and really serious and say to me, I'm ready to do the work of God. I'm, I'm, I'm fully compliant. No matter what comes this year, I'm going to stand. I want to be used. You could be used in the area of evangelism. You could be used as an usher. You could be used as a, as a, as a steward. You could be used in, as a Sunday school teacher, as a youth worker, whatever the situation is. Now Isaiah asked a very pertinent question or answered a very pertinent question. But God gave him that revelation. And the question from God was, whom shall I send? And Isaiah responded in the affirmative. What did he say? He says, here I am, Lord send me. How's it with you today? Can we ask the same? Can God say the same to you today? Lord, I fasted. You don't have to chase after right riches. You don't have to chase after health. You don't have to chase after relationships. You don't have to chase after people. You don't have to chase after the things that you want. God understands you. So this morning as we, we come to almost the end of this word. How's it with you? Has this fast been good? Have you kept? Have you complied with what was asked of you? If you are and you have, whether well, even if it was half a day, let me say this to you. God honors you for what you've done. It was difficult. Perhaps some of you had busting headaches. Others could have, could have left everything and said, man, I'm, I'm doing this. But, but it wasn't easy. The attack of the enemy was, was, was great. But you know what? Others could have given up habits this week. For those of you that stop smoking or, or whatever the situation is, it, it pushes you, it kickstarts you to leave it for good. Now we're not condemning anybody. There's grace and there's room for you. But I want to say to you today, how about us starting on a clean slate? Tomorrow's the beginning of a brand new month, the second month of 2021, February. And as I end my fast and I get into tomorrow, can I say the things that I used to do, I do them no more. Lord, I need you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I believe in you. Are you compliant to the things of God? What does God want from you? Nothing. Just your soul. Just your life. Just to be a good steward. Do what God wants you to do. The first thing that you've done right this year was take the last eight days and give it to God. You started the year on the right track. I tell you what, the breakthroughs of this fast are coming at the end of this year, coming in the middle of this year, coming when the storms are hovering and are brewing over you. The, what you've done this week is going to unlock give you the answers for all of that because you are a child of God before I make an altar call and pray with you this morning and I know we're going to be asking the dads of the home can I pray for somebody this morning can I pray for somebody this morning you've gone through this fast it was a sacrifice to to wake up so early eat nothing the whole day do what you have to do. And it wasn't an easy week. But you still stand. Let me pray with you for your faithfulness. Father, I honor you today. I thank you that you're a God of breakthrough. You're a God who asks for something. And Lord, you come through. Now, Father, as I pray over your children, over every good steward, that has fasted and prayed, I release today a supernatural grace. I release today a breakthrough upon their lives in the name of Jesus. You've probably been blessed by the word and blessed by the praise and the worship that we've had. 
send us a good comment. Tell us to inspire you. Sometime this year, I'm going to be doing a 21 day fast. 2021 requires a 21 day fast. But I'm not going to be doing the vegetable fast as many would do. No, we're going to do abstinence. Because that is the true way of fasting and praying. And I'll tell you when, as we get back into church and so on, and we're going to do this together. I've asked for oil this morning. Let me just get mine. I don't have those bottles, but I've got mine in a, in a lovely bowl. This oil has no power in it. It's only a symbol. When I pray over this oil, and I want all the fathers, all the husbands, to get hold of that oil. If there's no dad in the house or husband in the house, then the mother, please. If there's no mother, then the next of kin, the guardian or the firstborn of that house, the eldest. Please, listen to me, this is sacred now. This would have been an anointing service and I would have been anointing a lot of people today. But I want to beat the system and not rob you of what the enemy is doing through lockdown. So I want to bless you today. And as we do this, I believe that it's a sign of secrecy. Why am I asking the fathers? Man is the head of the home. If you understand God's pattern for blessing, it's the father, the wife, the children. Alright? So what happens is we find that the blessings flows from the head down. When God anointed, when Moses anointed Herod, the Bible says that right from his head it was poured. The oil ran right down his beard. There's a prophetic picture to that. The blessings from the father runs unto the wife and unto the children. If it's not the father, the blessings from the mother, and God understands your situation, runs to the children. If it's not the mother, the blessings of the guardian, or the firstborn, the eldest, runs right down. We understand that procedure. So I'm going to pray today. I want you to lift up the oil as I pray. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as your children, Lord, listen to even the instruction that I give to them today. And as the Lord would lift up right now, lift up that oil, that bottle of oil, I bless them today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Lord, that the oil be used for anointing purposes. Lord, we understand that this is only a symbol of the anointing. There's no power in it. But Lord, when it is applied unto them, there is power in it. Supernatural power. I declare and I release that today over the airwaves. And I thank you for fire today in Jesus' mighty name. And I bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and anoint your families. Go ahead and do that right now. I want the praise and worship team to flow with me for a little while. Before I, I close this morning. I, I, I want to want to move and, and call February, favor February, supernatural favor February, favor, FF, favor February. And I'm going to ask God for favor over your lives. I'm going to ask God to bless you abundantly. I'm going to ask God to take away every fear, every anxiety, and every attack. All right, before I close, I'm going to hand over to the Praise and Worship Team. We're going to be meeting on Tuesday night again. We're coming back to you live on Tuesday night, so tune in with us for the hour of power. And I'm going to be praying for people. Bring somebody that's possessed. Bring somebody that's sick. Bring somebody and we're going to ask God for supernatural fire through the airwaves. Now before I, I close this morning, there on your screen are banking details. All right? Banking details to our church account. And you know right now we cannot receive any offerings or anything of that sort. But we are encouraging you through the avenue and platform of online banking to please so. How about 
after you've sown or after you've fasted today, how about perhaps sowing a first fruit seed right at the beginning of the year? First fruit seed. If I can ask you to do that, and I don't do this if I'm not led to, ask God to clear your way financially. Ask God to cause a release today. Ask God to bless you. Ask God to do something. So if you have your tithes and your offerings and you want to sow it, the details are on the screen. Or, or, or you can get that, you can follow that and do that. Also, if you want to sow a seed, a first fruit seed, that is, Lord, I'm giving you the first salary. Apart from my tithes and my offerings, I'm sowing today a seed for my protection this year. I'm sowing, Lord, for things to go well. Can you do that? And please record it accordingly so we will pray and we know what's first fruits and what's tithes, right? So if you would do that, we would appreciate that and we're going to bless you. I'm going to be leaving here, but before I do that, I want to pronounce the benediction. There's a powerful team behind me. They're going to bring this meeting to an end. Can we pray today? Father, I thank you for the blessings of today. I thank you for supernatural favor and I bless your children today. As Lord, we I will be concluding a little later on with this fast. I thank you for every faithful man, woman, little boy, little girl, and I bless them back a zillion for them. And Lord, as we would even close today, we ask your blessing upon us all in the name of Jesus. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the only wise God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the blessed and sweet Holy Spirit rest in the mind of each one of us now and forevermore until we meet Jesus face to face in the clouds of glory and everybody will say together Amen. From me to you I'll see you on Tuesday. Goodbye. Have a blessed day. Break your fast. God bless you. Bye bye.